Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Solar React Talk. Tonight, I'm going to be reacting to Star Wars vs. Warhammer 40k, episode 15, I Deny You, by a fan with too much time. If you want to check out my previous reactions to other Star Wars vs. Warhammer episodes, remember the playlist card is going to be at the top. Just click on it and be able to access them. If you want to check out the original video as well as uh, a fan with too much time's YouTube channel, the links are going to be in the description below. Last week, uh, was episode 14 you are on the right path or fastest route sorry you are on the fastest route uh, the, sto the main hero of that story was Bofin 337 uh, Servitor Skull uh, that tried to save its master from being killed by the clone troopers her name was Nerva and you know it commandeered a APC armored personnel carrier along with some of the Imperium of Man uh, soldiers and or should I say the Imperial Guard soldiers and they plunged into the wall rescuing Nerva and yeah it was a bit of a happy ending uh, for these particular people and now we are heading off to episode 15 I deny you I will tell you the truth I saw the thumbnail <laughs> i know who's in the thumbnail uh it's shock t it's right julia so yes we are going back to that battle we are going back let's go three two one go Shakti felt her brow furrow as a bizarre emotion began to trickle into her mind. She had trained within many of the Jedi temples across the galaxy, had faced foes both mundane and touched by the Force who had made swordsmanship their life's pursuit, honing their bodies into variable weapons of defense and death. In such times, she would rarely feel sensations like this and most commonly, the opponent who prompted it was sensitive to the greater powers of the universe. And yet, despite the Imperial before her being unable to use the Force, despite her being a mad, frenzied storm of a being fueled by fear and faith in equal measure, and despite Shakti's own disdain for her, she could not help but feel it again. Appreciation and even grim admiration mingled with more than a little frustration fomenting a novel, if troubling, series of sensations within her. The Jedi wove to the left, living two steps within the future of the fight. The blistering engine of the micro-missile fired from the female warrior's pistol sailing past Shakti's face. Before we continue on with the battle, I just want to say, Shakti, yes, you might feel all of these things for Rujulia, you know, appreciation and respect and all that stuff. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> on the other side, on Rujulia's side, she still views you as a witch, <laughs> you know, as a Xeno threat. You know, she does not respect you in that type of way that you might probably respect her, you know. She just sees you as something that needs to be exterminated. 
I just need to point that out. Yeah. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> the crazed woman was right behind the shot, rearing her maul in a suicidally direct attack as she pitched her pistol forward. The weapon now empty, Shakti suspected. The There's still, there was two. She had two shots left. So she spent one, meaning there's one left. So be careful, Shakti. There's still one more left. Jedi Master speared toward her opponent's heart, intending to drive through the distraction and lance the sister through her chest. Her blade pierced the thrown handgun, already angling to make the decisive strike and end Rajulia's desperate bid. Rajulia, for her part, did not flinch even as she recognized what was about to happen. Shakti felt a great conflict stir within her, one she had not expected to face. It was not just that well-worn sensation of facing off against another being who had bent themselves to a singular task with mastery and focus. Not just the feeling of pitting her skills against those of a fearsome and inordinately talented fighter. This woman, the sister of battle, did not reek of the selfishness that so often pervaded the enemies which Shakti did battle with. She rarely encountered the purely evil, but this was much more than a matter of mere nuance. The sister was... selfless. Utterly selfless. Shakti could feel it. So many thoughts and emotions whirling around the warrior, and yet not a one was concerned with her own well-being. She had, Shakti realized, consigned herself to death long before arriving here. No, the Jedi understood in the last moment as her saber drove through and melted the hand cannon that was to cover Rajulia's last charge. Martyrdom. This woman had resigned herself to martyrdom, and not for glory or for power, but for faith. I will say this again for the people in the back. <laughs> I will say this again. Uh, faith is the deepest and truest form of magic. Faith in the God Emperor. Faith in the Imperium of Man. Faith in herself. That will pull her through to victory. No matter the cost, no matter what happens, she's going to push forward. And this is what is so frightening about fighting against such people you know people who are so caught up in their faith and in their religion you can't beat people like this with logic you can't beat people like this uh with uh compassion or with any other form of emotional uh manipulation nothing they are resolute they will complete their mission no matter the cost it's madness but it is powerful. Faith. For survival. It was as the Jedi Master realized this that the gun exploded in the air before her, scattering shrapnel and fire in all directions and into Shakti herself. She was blinded, deafened, thrown from her balance and would have been left utterly helpless. But the force was with her. Shakti swayed her body to the left and then to the right, moving like a stumbling, flickering flame. The sister charged through the smoke and fire, half-blind herself, small bits of metal cutting and drawing bloody lines and furrows on the unshielded skin of her face. She screamed as the Jedi backtracked, swinging with her maul, the weapon humming as its power field abused the molecules in the air between them. The sound made Shakti's mantras feel like bursting as the weapon waved dangerously close to the stumbling warrior's head, then chest. But like a soap bubble, the Jedi slipped and floated past the power maul's reach each time, leaping back to gain distance, the force guiding her landing. She rose, almost smirking at the sound of Virgilia's impotent rage, but grimaced instead as sudden pain cascaded down her form, now feeling the bits of the gun embedded within her. Blood slicked her robes, and in that instant she realized that the Imperial had left one explosive shot in her pistol, luring the Jedi to thrust through it, detonating the round within. Yeah, um, and you know what? 
I think it was also a bad idea for the Jedi to come into battle against the Warhammer 40k with just their Jedi robes. I think, it, you know, they, they wear them because it makes them agile, it, you know, it gives them more freedom to do the things that they do. But, I don't know, you guys just need heavy armor to protect yourselves from uh, the types of weapons that these guys use. Um, yeah, you know, any any kind of advantage that you can get with heavy armor, you guys got to use it. Um, because the, the Warhammer 40k, they're using weapons that have these explosives and it's devastating. Some of them, they use shrapnel with their explosives. So, you know, coming out here with your pajamas, <laughs> with, with your Jedi robes, you know, all peaceful looking, it's just not going to cut it. It's just not going to cut it. But, yeah. Hmm. The master grit her teeth. It was some perverse cosmic irony that the shot the blasted fanatic hadn't fired had been the only one to reach her. Smoothly stepping over the cables, the Jedi remained calm, avoiding the swipes of her foe as the smoke cleared and Rajulia became more precise. Shakti's sight also began to return, recovering from the flash more and more with every passing second. A clever last gambit, but it is spent! Shakti yelled in an attempt to dissuade the Imperial, but to no avail. Rajulia flashed a nasty grin, yanking a frag grenade from her belt with her free hand, popping the pin with the thumb of her powered gauntlet, and hurling it at the Jedi. Sha and remember, remember, she has two, if I'm not mistaken. She has two, no, no, she has one frag grenade, and then the other one is a type of magnetic properties grenade. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what it was called, I can't remember, but... Uh, Rogelia said that, or not Rogelia, but I found it was time, said that this particular explosive was designed to kill uh, Astartes. So it's a very powerful explosive. Uh, she has that one left. So she has a frag grenade that she's throwing right now, and then she has that, you know, uh, one that's designed to kill Astartes. So, um, Chuck T. Please be careful. Akti extended her own hand in response, reaching out and seizing the explosive from the air with a net of concentrated strands of pure force. With a flick of her wrist and mind, the master sent the lethal grenade sailing out of one of the squat windows. Rajulia had never stopped, however, bellowing hymns of hatred as she pressed the attack again. Shakti held her saber easily with her other hand, deflecting and dodging the next three swipes as the sister palatine's sinister weapon forced back, but little more. The Imperial grunted, sweat flying from her hair as she twisted and lashed out, aiming to catch the Jedi's leg. Yet the Tergruta was a master duelist, and the environment favored her far too much, stepping out of the way with precognitive ease, kicking the sister in the face with the same leg. Rajulia could take a hundred more strikes and never land a single one, but Shakti would not give her a hundred more. As the sister reeled, the Jedi Master drove in, feet light as feathers in spite of her wounds, ducking under another sweep as Rajulia covered her sudden withdrawal. The Jedi made a full turn, bending with inhuman grace to dodge the backswing of the sister's attack and using the force to propel her forward, ceasing her spin and finishing it. Rajulia growled blood, a sound utterly composed of vicious pain and rage, but could do little as the blue blade of the Jedi she faced burst from her back. Shakti held her blade steady within the Imperial's chest, expecting the sister to fall and slice herself in half with the movement. Rajulia held firm enough to avoid that humiliation, even as trails of red began to drip from her nose and color her unpainted lips. Wait, I found so much time. Why is boss music busy playing right now? Uh-uh. I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like this. I don't like this. 
The Power Ball pulsed as it hit the ground, bouncing once before coming to rest on the cracked pavement of the bunker floor. Shakti could feel the woman's powered gauntlet, now empty, clasp her shoulder, the hand exerting a crushing pressure which the Jedi fended off with a sheath of the Force. Still, as Rajulia's legs gave out, Shakti was borne down to a crouch as well. The woman tried to speak, but a gout of blood spilled crimson from her lips in place of any words. Shakti's blade had punctured both her lungs, angled as such. The sister had already spoken her final words, her eyes already losing their focus, and with a small twist of her wrist, Shakti severed her spine, and Rajulia's grip on her shoulder slackened. Mm-mm, 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 I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. Guys, do you remember the, the, the fight between Anakin Skywalker and the Astartes? Uh, and he was with the Wreckers. And, you know, they were beating up on this Astartes uh, soldier. They were, you know, killing him. They were shooting, him, shooting at him with all their weapons. And, you know, there was an explos explosion that took off half of his face. Uh, or maybe his entire face uh, and you know the Astartes was on the ground and he was still talking he was still talking this is the same situation that's happening right now I don't like this the only way Anakin Skywalker could stop this Astartes soldier from you know keep on laughing I think he was laughing or talking I can't remember was to you know decapitate his head you know so I'm thinking maybe that's what Shakti should do right now. Decapitate her. It's the only way to stop these people permanently. Yeah, I don't like this. As the Jedi began to pull away from the defeated, dying Imperial Priestess, Shakti wished that this could be the last assassination she would need to carry out. But she planned to be as thorough as possible. They needed to assure a victory here above all else. She jerked then, as the sister's grip returned, this time on Shakti's wrist, her blade only half withdrawn. The fanatic was holding it in place. Discipline and devotion never falter! The woman managed to choke past the blood streaming from her mouth. Shakti- Please, Shakti, decapitate her right now, do it, please, I am begging you, you are going to die. <sighs> T felt the cold shock run up her spine and jerked her hand, but was held firmly in place, the grip tight. to rise again, to pull herself off this dying maniac. But the sister clutched her tightly, punching the Jedi in the stomach with the grenade-bearing fist and driving the air out of Shakti's lungs, nearly breaking her ribs. An instant later, an activation chime sounded from the bomb. It's over. It's over. The Jedi furrowed her brows, gritting her teeth in sudden frustration. The woman was still fighting. This was becoming ridiculous. The Jedi Master summoned forth the Force once more and shoved her free palm against the sister's armored chest, issuing forth a column of the Force strong enough to blow away an entire front line. The pressure produced was easily sufficient to shove the dying sister through the wall of the command bunker like a human bolt round. And yet, Rajulia's hair did not even wave in response to it. Instead, Shakti felt her heart skip a beat, felt her body chill completely, frozen by the sudden touch of fear as a golden light seemed to radiate out from the sister before her. The Jedi Master felt her power, the power of the Force, throw itself against the Imperial, and yet she hit something altogether different, something vast and old and wise, 
Something shining and terrible, burning and writhing in fires that screamed like the legions of the damned. Suddenly, Shakti was not in the grasp of a dying, desperate warrior. Without any understanding of what she was bearing witness to, the Jedi looked up and saw not the furious, blood-streaked face of Sister Ajulia staring back, but in its place, the serene, ravaged image of a human skull wreathed in blinding flame in place of cascading hair. Wow, so the Emperor's, uh, you know, projecting himself through Rojulia? Wow. He can do that from the great distances between the two galaxies? Wow. You go, Emperor. Shakti released her saber, deactivating it, and opened both hands as the force began to flow through her like never before. She pushed with all her might, crying out to Groot and Fangs, extending as she poured all of herself into the attempt. In response, the skull stared straight into her and spoke three words in the sister's voice. I deny you. K.O. Rajulia wins. He had only arrived minutes ago, but upon hearing what the sisters had discovered, he had wasted no time. Shatterick had to see it with his own eyes. And Shatterick, okay. Shatterick. He looks like a commissar. He is wearing the hat. He has the coat. Yeah, you're a commissar. And when he did, the sight did not disappoint him. Laying there, half buried in rubble and lit by the dimming light of the shrouding sun, was his erstwhile nemesis, Sister Palatine Rajulia herself. Nemesis? Are you guys enemies? Huh, okay. She was dead, her left arm, shoulder, and chest obliterated by an explosion that must have gone off in her hand. She lay sprawled, evidently thrown back before the bunker half collapsed, her face completely covered in her own blood, her expression an empty, impassive glare, as if staring in flaccid disappointment at the sky above them. His gaze moved from her shattered body to the even less intact remains of the enemy she had been fighting. Whoever this foe had been, they certainly had not been blessed with the benefit of powered armor, and little remained. A red arm here, a strange, bloody tentacle there. Ooh. Shakti is dead. Yes. She is dead. Uh, you know, even if she did wear armor, I, I just don't know if it, if it would have helped her at that very moment. I just don't know. Damn. For all the trouble Rajuli had caused him during her dogging of his career, Shadrick was well pleased that she had found a way to die as a loyal Imperial, wretched upstart that she was. The Commissar Captain straightened his cap and turned away, barely managing to mask his triumph as mild disgust. Awaiting him was an attendant, a sister of the temple, though a logistical aide, not a battle sister. Her last act was to field promote Sergeant Lazarus and send him and the local garrison to intercept the artillery barrage assaulting the temple. She said to him, half reading from a report clutched in her hands. He kept his face still and unreadable, defying the nearly overwhelming urge to bare his teeth in a display of his displeasure. Even in her last act, the woman had dared defy the order of things, giving commands and field promotions to guardsmen before even verifying the loss of the command chain. The there was no time to verify the loss of the command chain. You guys were being invaded 10 minutes in, and you guys just were just sitting and waiting for orders that were never going to come because the command structure was assassinated by Shakti. So Rujulia had to take action. 
of course she did not know what happened to the command structure at the time but she also realized that guys it's been 10 minutes or was it 20 minutes i can't remember but it has been you know some minutes have passed by while the enemy continues to advance forward on their positions she had to take the initiative commissar nerve of the insubordinate dead bitch still amazed him but all that was before we knew how well positioned they are the sister continued without any support forced lazarus will suffer terrible casualties just on the approach should we send a missive to recall them she asked again kamasar captain shadrick had to hold his expression still deliberately though this time for the opposite reason stiffening his features to prevent the hideous grin he now felt trying to manifest onto his face. Clearly he is not in any business of saving those people's lives. He is here to ruin any form of legacy that is going to be left behind by Rogelia. He is here to make sure that her character, her, uh, you know, credentials are destroyed. You know, her character assassinated. He's here to make sure that her name is erased because this is her nemesis this is his nemesis you know Rujulia. and even though she's dead he's still going to be kicking her in the face <laughs> he's still going to be kicking her in the face spitting at her throwing sand at her you know he's going to do all that is petty just to make sure that this woman is utterly destroyed Hmm. Rajulia had never been a competent tactician, and, true to her flaw, she had acted rashly, expecting men like Shadrick to clean up her mess afterwards. Not this time. No, he said, shocking the sister before him. But, sir, she began, this was Rajulia's last order, her last decision of command. I will honor it. He said, squaring his jaw and straightening his jacket. Um, I kind of agree with him though. You know, I would also just allow the Lazarus uh, platoon or company just to keep moving forward and let's see how far they get against the clone troopers. You know, to the point where it does become a serious situation where they are totally outnumbered, they are outgunned, you know, they are being killed far faster than they are able to push against the clone troopers that's when i would decide to try and save them however with uh shadrick he is not in any business he has no mood he has no interest <laughs> in trying to save these people's lives he is here to make sure that uh rajulia's last orders will be you know a devastating loss for you know the imperium of man He's here to destroy this lady's reputation. Yeah. The sister seemed placated by that, taking the wrong meaning from his deceptive words. Oh, how he wished she could see this now. How he hoped her shade yet lingered to watch in mute fury as the man she had declared a heretic, the man who had narrowly avoided her noose so many times, now gave orders under proper authority to her own naive sisters. Very well, Commissar. What support should we send to aid them? She asked. He felt his eyebrow twitch. These sororitas were always so outspoken, only ever truly respecting those within their own faith structure. Speaking and following the heart was such a pretty set of sentiments, but they belonged nowhere near the battlefield. None, he said. This time, the woman openly balked mouth dropping open but why she asked because he can asked he felt a muscle in his jaw jerk involuntarily had she been under his jurisdiction a guardsman he cleared his throat rajulia has left us with little enough to defend against the incoming assault as it is and we cannot trust that what is left to force lazarus will be enough after they carry out their mission if they even can. Radio the following bases, pristine judgment and indifference. Have them pull up and send all of their forces to us as quickly as they can manage. They should arrive in time to help us hold against the enemy. 
The sister shook her head and then nodded, tapping and scribbling away at the data slate she cradled in one arm. The order has been sent. I'm sorry, but I must speak my mind. This is madness, Commissar! Force Lazarus has some of our best specialist forces within it! Soldiers of Cadia, Bogrin shock troops, Calambian patriots, Death Corpsmen! Perhaps you should have advised Rajulia on these facts as well, before she became set on promoting some random sergeant and sending them out to their deaths! Now, cease your questioning, or I will find another to perform your duties in your place! Snap. Chaos is a ladder, sister of the, um, in the temple. You must understand that word, or that sentence. Chaos is a ladder, and he is climbing that ladder. He has ambition, and he is on a mission to destroy his nemesis legacy. Chaos is a ladder. Watch him climb. After the Commissar. The sister took a step back and nodded, cowed by the sudden fury in the Commissar Captain's words. He restrained his smile. Shadrick could understand why this one had not made the cut for the front line. Yet he could still see that spark of defiance in her, and sighed, knowing that making more enemies so soon after losing one would make little sense, at least for now. If they accomplish their objective, then, and only then, we will offer them full support for their extraction. He conceded, and again suppressed a smile as he saw her untense at that meaningless caveat. Rajulia's legacy would be the blood of heroes and martyrs. His career, however, would be built on their corpses. He would rescue this operation, and rise as a result seen no longer as a mere Commissar Captain, but a Lord Commissar as well. S Very ambitious. Tune. Before a fan of too much time speaks to us, I just want to say that this was Star Wars vs. Warhammer 40k episode 15, I Deny You by a fan of too much time. Yes, uh, the fight between Rogelia and Shock T is over. Um, nobody won, but Rogelia won. <laughs> she had the last... She had the last uh, words there. She had the last action, you know, by blowing up uh, that explosive. And it took her, it took Shock T as well. It, it took the command structure, you know, just blew up everything there. And yeah. Uh, I don't know what to say, really. You know, I, I know about Shock T. I, I've seen her time to time in you know star wars clone wars and all the other star wars content that's out there um and i remember fighting against her in star wars force unleashed 
Um, yeah, that was like, that was an interesting game. <laughs> Force Unleashed was a very interesting game. I really did enjoy it. But yeah, I remember fighting um, against her in that game. And yeah, she she's an interesting character. And Rogelia, you know, she did her best. She understood that it was not going to be enough. But with her faith, you know, with her determination, she had to make sure that she would uh, neutralize this target no matter the cost. And that's what she did. She completed her mission. Um, and also, T Shakti, she completed her mission, you know, neutralizing the command structure. Um, and yeah, you know, Shakti, good luck in the afterlife, in, in the force. And uh, Rogelia, good luck to you in the warp. Oh, but it's the same thing. <laughs> but yes, good luck in the afterlife, guys. Enjoy yourselves there, wherever you guys are going to be at. And yeah, all I can say is till we meet again. Till we meet again, guys. Because I believe in reincarnation. You guys will be reincarnated somewhere, sometime, in some existence. I know. You guys will be reincarnated. And hopefully... You know, in your next lives, you will you will be having a far more peaceful life instead of this one. Yeah. Okay, guys, that was uh, a fan with too much times. Star Wars versus Warhammer 40k episode 15. I deny you. If you want to check out the original video as well as the Fan Streamer Times YouTube channel, the links are in the description below. If you like my reaction, please give me a like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Click on the notification bell if you want to be up to date with my latest videos. And let us continue with a fan with too much time. Hey all, so this is a fan with too much time. And here we are at the end of another episode and... Honestly, I don't know yet how you guys are going to take this one, but I personally like it a lot. Um, because, and it, it may not be super clear to people who are just watching the movies and maybe just partaking of certain parts of the visual medium, but Shock T is actually supposed to be a very impressive combatant. Like, the fact that she, while she is repeatedly defeated by General Grievous, you have to remember that most of her defeats take place under the context of the old Grievous from Legends and not the sort of hokey villain Grievous from the newer lore. And what that generally means is that he is this terrifying Darth Vader-esque Jedi killing machine and while Shakti isn't able to ultimately defeat him, that is supposed to be more a statement on his awesomeness and his power than it is supposed to be a statement on how bad Shock T is. And, um, and while Shock T in canon makes some sort of lore judgments, like, like some judgments, like, um, not combat judgments, but actual, like, commander and governance judgments that really do allow for Order 66 to go through. See some of Geatsley's videos for uh, really good details on that. While she does do stuff like that, you are supposed to take her... You are supposed to take her extremely seriously when it comes to combat. Um, yeah, like I said before, I remember... I, um, I played Star Wars Force Unleashed. And, you know, she was one of the characters that I had to fight against. And, yeah, she was a very difficult opponent. You know, she was battling on the planet Felugia, if I'm not mistaken. And she was also controlling a very dangerous, huge monster. I'm not sure what kind of creature it was. I can't remember. Uh, but it was a very powerful creature. And, you know, I was Starkiller. Is that the name of the guy? Starkiller, I think. I can't remember. Guys, <laughs> it's been a long time. Force Unleashed, yo. It, it was a long time ago very old game but yeah um i remember fighting against this lady and yeah she was really difficult very very difficult and also in the clone wars when clone wars was uh, on cartoon network um there were some episodes with her in it and yeah she did some you know 
typical Jedi kind of things, but then she also added in her own flair into it. Um, I remember when she was chasing after someone and like she just jumped so high up in the air and it's as if she was gliding, you know, descending towards the person. And, you know, she, you could just see her robes just, you know, fluttering in the air like that. And it just made her look a bit scary, you know. Uh, I can't remember the episode. I can't remember the season. But, yeah, that's what I remember about her the most is that particular scene when she just jumped so high in the air and then she was descending down towards her uh, target and you know it just made her look very scary in the kind of way yeah hmm. but she's good she's good and while sisters of battle are incredibly powerful you find that the thing that elevates them above just being really really good like really unbreakable um power armored humans is their faith abilities um speaking of which we get like our first little taste of faith abilities here and i'm gonna go oh so it's a faith ability okay i just thought it was just her you know sheer force of will and of course her faith but a faith ability interesting okay go ahead and state this right now because i have actually not read a ton of sisters of battle books i've read um i think i've read like one or two short stories and of course, I've played Dawn of War, all of them. Um, but I hardly take the frequency of uh, of miracles occurring in that game to be like how how they're supposed to occur. I'm also aware that, like in the VR game for uh, Warhammer, where you play a Sister of Battle, that you have like a, a faith force push and stuff like that. And again, I don't think that's supposed to represent how accessible the faith powers are. But regardless as to whether or not they actually are or are not, are not super common in standard canon, I am making them much less common here. Um, and I'm, I'm adding a few conditions that make them more or less likely that if you pay close attention as uh, we go forward, you will notice um, and be able to pick up on. But the point being is that um <clears throat> the uh the sisters are displaced in time and space they're not just physically far away from the emperor he probably doesn't even exist yet and if he does he's in an incredibly early state somewhere back in the milky way galaxy during the very early history of mankind and therefore is not any is not the recognizable psyche that the sisters are thinking of when they think of the emperor you know like if you were to to to, to put out a psychic wanted poster for the emperor that they're looking for it wouldn't match the emperor that currently exists there's just too much time between um now and then and what he is now and what he will become later so while they still have their abilities to an extent because to an extent, the faith powers seem to defy absolutely everything we understand about the warp and, like, the way that time and space and general powers in this universe work. While they do tend to defy those things, and I do give them credit for that, um, they are still far away. So, you so, so the faith powers, are they not similar to, like, Psyche abilities? I'm just wondering about that. And do battle sisters have um, psychers in their ranks? Huh. Wait, let me just write this down here. Faith. Powers. Okay. You still get them. But as you can see, they're not just going to pop up super nilly willy. And when they do, expect the effects to be a bit more subdued most of the time. Not all, but most of the time. Um, and that's sort of like my spiel there on the faith powers and, uh, and also on, uh, on shock T and, and why I actually do really like, um, this, uh, the, the conclusion for this battle. Um, there's going to be casualties in this war. Good people are going to die. Bad people are going to die. Um, and speaking of good and bad people, 
we have the introduction of a bit of a a bit of a, a of a more antagonistic force because you know I do have to be fair and represent the Imperium fairly and part of that is not just showing off all the heroes of the Imperium but also the ambitious and self-interested you know bloodthirsty guys that exist in the Imperium as well you know what makes the Imperium so interesting is not just that they're fighting against these existential threats you know in the mercury galaxy it's also their own internal politics you know the internal politicking and uh, 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 the machinations of the different commanding structures of the imperium of man you know uh, that's what also makes it quite interesting uh, to you know learn about and and to study about and to understand about the imperium of man so yeah it's good that a fantasy most time is also added you know that type of spice <laughs> in, into his stories so yeah and shadrick is here to help fulfill that a bit because you might say oh well what about villains for star wars i mean there's palpatine palpatine is literally in control of the republic the jedi order like he is a dark lord of the sith he actually orchestrated this war though not to his benefit um he is definitely the evil force taking place here. And as you can see, if you're also paying attention to the previous readings, the Jedi are not coming out of this unscathed. They're not just physically unscathed. I mean, they're not, they're not able to commit the acts they have to to combat the forces from the Warhammer 40k universe um, without being tested and tried very hard. And, and again, if you go into my Reddit account and you like surf through my many comments and several hot takes, you know, forgive me, I'm a human being. Um, if you go through there, you will see a bunch of my discussions and, and opinions on the lore for lots of things. And one of the things that you'll find if you look hard enough is my opinion on sort of um, the Jedi Order's major flaws. And the major flaws, and I don't know if this is an intentional thing, but this is certainly at the very least my headcanon, and I think that it rhymes enough with the lore that we see that it can really just be canon, um, and it makes a lot, a lot of sense. And it's that the Jedi Order, um, they, over time, and I, don't, I, I can speculate on why this is the case and how this became the case, but they moved away from what the original Jedi Order was about, which was... Um, you know, in the old canon, it was about using both the light side and the dark side as two natural halves of the force. However, in the Disney canon, there has been a, a redefinition of what the light side and the dark side is to make them less ambiguous as so far as morality is concerned. Because before it was sort of like, okay, the dark side isn't evil the way the Sith use it is evil. The dark side is just passion and emotion and the power that you draw from that and losing control to it isn't a good thing. Um, and the Jedi aren't, I mean, and the, and the light side isn't good, it's just the way the Jedi use it is good. The so essentially the Force is just the Force. It just, you know, it's just de uh, determined by how you use it. Whether you're going to use it for your own evil reasons or you're using it for your you know, good reasons. Yeah, if I can say that. Okay. The light side does, you know, sort of lend itself to being in control of yourself. And generally speaking, people don't do messed up things when they're in control, but they could. So there you go. Um, that's kind of how it was in the old canon. In the new canon, the dark side has been redefined as imbalance, as, as badness. Um, think... In KOTOR 2, the horrible effects of, of massive amounts of death and the way that it creates wounds in the Force, that is now all of the dark side. All of the dark side is varying levels of Force wounding, of Force disturbance. KOTOR, um, is he talking about the Knights of the Old Republic? Yeah, okay. Uh, it goes from just, you know, standard, like, just irritated force presence, irritated balance, you know. Um, it goes from there all the way to what would be a much more serious issue, which is, like, um, something like Darth Sidious or even Nihilus, where the force is just totally 
fucking inverted and and totally messed up. And I like that. <laughs> Uh, for if, if for no other reason than that that perspective of the dark side and the light side really lends itself to this story where effectively the force and the netherworld of the force is just the warp but um but no war in heaven has occurred no daemons have formed and well if you read star wars canon especially legends you will find that there are daemons like very much the way that we see them in 40k too like to the point that you think people were like reading the literature and bringing things in that they like I don't know, like, you know, as the war continues on Axiom, maybe something might happen. <laughs> maybe some demons might just start popping up. You never know. Um, so th that's cool, but, um, but, you know, they're not, they're not, they've only been on the conglomerate. They, there are some demons, but no chaos gods or anything to, to unify that kind of force. So I really like the way that the new lore defines the dark side. Um, and one of the side effects that this has had is that it further sort of expounds upon the way that dark side powers, quote unquote, work and light side powers, quote unquote, quote, work. And that is to say that no longer are most, I'm not sure if this is the case with, with all force powers, but no longer is the case that most force powers are by their nature inherently of the light side or the dark side and it's much more the intention behind the power that fuels whether or not it lends to the imbalance okay so what about force choke <laughs> how how does someone who is supposedly a jedi <clears throat> use force choke in a good manner you know in a good way how? How do you use that? <laughs> it would be very funny though. Seeing a Jedi use false choke on someone like... <laughs> nah. So now, for example, there is um, Force Lightning, which is the Sith variant of like, well, just Force Lightning, which is the most powerful version at least if you understand the lore the way that I do. And then there is an actual Jedi version of it that I believe Plo Koon could use which he referred to as electric justice. <laughs> electric justice. Oh my gosh, guys. No, 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 no. No, I refuse. <laughs> I refuse. Renaming it is not going to help. You know, we know what false lightning does to people. Okay. Okay, m m maybe stunning people with lightning sure then you can call it <laughs> force of justice yeah you can call it that if you're purely stunning someone sure but guys come on come on and that's why that's why i was asking about force choke like how are you also going to rebrand that and call it uh force choke of justice or something uh gosh this is just too funny which sounds like corny ass shit that a Jedi who is as good guy as Plo Koon would definitely make up, especially if he was trying to avoid getting censored or worse by the Jedi Council for having used it. It's like, hey, Plo, I don't know. That stuff looks like some Sith stuff. I don't, mm. And he's like, oh, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's justice. Electric justice. Oh, yeah. I must sell it that way. And it's just corny enough that it gets Yoda on board, but whatever. <laughs> the point is just that now the explanation between those two things, it used to be that it was that Plo Koon had created a technique that was extremely similar. But now it is the case that they are the same technique used with extremely different intentions and thereby providing extremely different effects. And if you don't really know what the different effects are, um, while electric justice could be used to, to kill someone, typically speaking, it was much more precise in that you could aim it at like weapons to disarm people. And more importantly, it was much more given over to stunning um, people and, and causing pain but not destroying them uh, in the process. Whereas force lightning when used by a Sith is like concentrated bolts of force radiation. It's like a warp bolt. It really is. Like it just messes you up, man. It hit. It hits you on every level that it can reach in a desperate kind of way where it's just trying to hatefully erase you from existence. Yeah, I remember what happened to Windu. Oh, gosh. Oh, terrible. Um, in the medium of lightning, I suppose you could say. So 
those are kind of the differences that you see here. Um, rather, the differences that we now see in, in, in the canon, and that's going to be interesting for me to reflect. I forget why I started talking about that. Um, but yeah, I like this story. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we have these um, uh, uh, various uh, uh, antagonists coming in. The Jedi are de definitely coming out of this unscathed. And yeah, the, their, their intention, if you'll notice, their intention with the way they use the Force is shifting as they're made to face down the grim dark forces of the imperium which i will say this um if you're a star wars fan and you think that the forces of the imperium are just like so evil so fucked up and they are I, i'm not here to even excuse it because you will find especially in the forces like you know men like like shadrick you will find that there is true like you know bad faith ambition and true evil within the imperium but you, what you will also find that is much more often the case is that the Imperium, as a collective, is traumatized. It's just... And it's traumatized in a way that it's never really meant to get better. Um, like, they've been fighting since day one. You know? They've been fighting ever since the unification of Terra, all the way through the conquest of the galaxy, and then after the, uh, the conquest, the Civil War... After the Civil War, then they still have to be fighting against other Xeno races, and it's just been going on and on and on and on and on and on and on throughout the millenniums. So this is just who they are now. They are mentally fixed that way, you know, from birth till death. Yeah. And that isn't to say that they can't get better. That is simply to say that, that normally the trauma incurred by the Imperium and its citizens and all members of its society is the kind that they will never get a break from to heal from, at least not most of them. Um, and the healing they do is more like patching themselves up enough that they can persist and go on and fight to, you know, live to fight another day. Not so much they ever become healthy or fully recover from the things that happen to them. In the Warhammer 40k universe, it's not about living. You know, they're not there to live, they're there to survive. Every day, it's a fight for survival every single day so this incredibly traumatized incredibly like like just you know assaulted faction that is used to dealing with the absolute worst things that you can imagine is suddenly dunked in they're gonna react violently to everything i mean even if there is one day a member or a faction of the imperium that breaks off and it's like hey let's try to live peacefully in a universe that allows it to happen which is not impossible we see examples in warhammer that these that 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 show that these things are possible um they they will very likely even then go for isolationism and only after having done a fair amount of tragic things of their own before coming to understand that this is even an option that they could conceive of. Um, that is the kind of thing you're dealing with when you deal with uh, the Imperium. I mean, literally just being a factory worker in the Imperium is likely to traumatize you more than being a soldier here on the normal Earth um, just because of oh man, so many things. I can't go to even, I can't even go into it. Um, but in any case, guys, I'm trying not to make these after talks any longer than the actual content itself, trying to respect you in that regard, because I feel like maybe you think that I, I, I that the after talks in any way reflect the amount of content that comes before them. I always make the after talks second, and they're usually composed of my ramblings, which is why they take so long. Um, but to that end and to that goal, I'm going to go ahead and say this. Um, you guys have a great day. Have a great week. And I'll see you guys next week, same time, same place. Okay, guys, that was a fan with too much time uh, speaking about, you know, the different, um, should I say, like paths that Sisters of Battles can attain, you know, like faith powers, which is quite interesting. I never heard of the term. I never knew there were such abilities that the Sisters of Battles could, uh, Sisters of Battle battle, you know, that they could acquire such abilities um i'm still wondering whether is it a form of you know psycho ability or is the are these faith powers just you know connected purely to the emperor yeah yeah like some sort of unique branch of powers that is not 
connected to the warp in any way yeah i'm just wondering about that um and also talking about the paths of the jedi you know how they have changed over many years how they've diverted away from using uh the force in its totality you know instead of just using half of it and leaving the rest uh you know sealed away and kept away maybe because of fear of what it will lead to you know and how some jedi have begun to um rename <laughs> some force uh, force abilities that would be considered part of the dark side of the force you know using them renaming them rebranding them uh so that they can be good for the public <laughs> good for the jedi um and using them against their enemies and yeah also uh you know talking about the the history of shakti you know a short a short bit of history on shakti and how strong she was um uh, how she also fought against general grievous and you know she didn't win all the time but you know she was a very powerful very astute uh jedi master and yeah you know it's just what happens in war you know terrible things happen uh just when you thought that this person was going to make it nope <laughs> it, it's not going to end that way it's just not going to end that way and yeah no the episode was good the episode was really good i found it too much time uh, i really did enjoy it and yeah guys i guess that's it that's it for tonight Remember, if you want to check out the original video as well as the Fanny Streamers Times YouTube channel, the links are in the description below. If you like my reaction, please give me a like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Click on the notification bell if you want to be up to date with my latest videos. And I guess I'll see you guys next week. Okay, good night.